That countdown gave you your daily value of vitamins B, C, D, and G. (laughs) I got to load up on that vitamin G. Welcome to Way Too Broad, a place for friends to talk about things they're really, really ridiculously excited about. That's the old one. That's the old one. I <laughs> didn't have the outline up, and that's what happens. We need to put the outline, like, painted onto your wall in front of you. That'd be yeah. good. Put it on the blinds I sit in front of yeah. or something. But it is still true. It's yes. also a program, and it's, f- like, show and tell for grown-ups. So, <laughs> I'm one of those grown-ups. I'm Hannah. And these are my co-hosts, Aaron and Ben. Hi, Aaron. Hey, Hannah. Hi, Ben. Hello, used twos, blues clues. I just added a new syllable to your name, Ben. 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 I'm so southern, you y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you y'all. <laughs> you y'all. You y'all. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no. Very natural. So great. Super Very cute. natural. So great. What <laughs> is up, you bups? How are you two? Do I'm great. <laughs> Did I I thought I was on a podcast, not a slam poetry night. <laughs> <laughs> Think again. <laughs> <laughs> Keep us guessing. Bessin? Uh, <laughs> I'm good. I'm doing good. Do you guys want to hear um, something cool that happened today? Frick deaf. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Sale struck out 17 batters in seven innings. Holy frickity That's moly. That's a lot. Of, That's a um, lot of cake batters to make the in only, one inning. Only three other pitchers have struck out, three other Red Sox pitchers have struck out that many batters in a game. Roger Clemens, who's famously struck out the most batters in the game ever, 20. Uh, Pedro Martinez, former Cy Young Award winner, Hall of Famer, and this guy whose name I forget because I didn't, I don't know him. He's from like the '80s, but that's still, you know, it's good company. He's good. You said in one inning? No, 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 no. That's impossible. <laughs> You're right. I forgot how baseball works. <laughs> in seven, in seven <laughs> innings, which is wow. actually insane. Like he struck out the first six batters of the game that he faced. Wow. Which is just wow. wild. He had eight. He had eight strikeouts after three innings. Only one batter got out away other than a strikeout in the first three innings. It's crazy. That's amazing. He's, we should yeah, be applauding that guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, not... Who, yeah, yeah, the guy who, like, got a hit, not the guy who, No, like, he didn't did... get a hit. He grounded out. Yeah. Ah. Like a good electrical socket. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're but right, he you're did... right. He made contact. <laughs> he did. Yeah. Like a good electrical socket. Like a good electrical socket. <laughs> <laughs> You can compare a lot of baseball to electrical sockets. Yeah, that's why I like you it know? so much. Yeah, you plug on in, you plug, you plugged <laughs> it. Oh, he's really plugged in to that game. He, wow, what a powerhouse! You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> he hit a home run, just like an electrical socket. It's, oh, it was a, it was a blackout. Uh. <laughs> ben, is that why you love? Uh, baseball, or is that why you love electrical engineering? Ooh, chicken yes. and the egg. Yes, and correct. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. What's everybody drinking tonight? Me? It's a Silly Tuesday episode of Way Too Broad. Ooh! Yeah, is it ever silly? <laughs> I accidentally have the same combination of drinks that I had last week. I have a Pina Frise, Face, La Croix, and a Nicola La Croix. Koala cola. What is pina freeze in English? Pineapple strawberry. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't tell because of Aaron's pronunciation. <laughs> I believe I it's pronounced fresa. I certainly don't blame you. Pina. <laughs> you couldn't get that from pina <laughs> Okay, that sounds delicious, though. Yeah, actually. yeah it's nice. It's refreshing. Refreshing. It's for fresh, like a nice electrical socket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, ben, what are you drinking? Iced water. Classic. Iced. That's I a was, baby brown classic. I was gonna have 
some nice tea because uh, Kylie and I went to a nice tea shop in San Diego this weekend. Um, we were visiting Aaron, or Aaron's brother was in San Diego. <laughs> we were visiting Aaron. Was yeah. I in San Diego? No, wow, I didn't know that. Dominic Did I have a nice time? Yeah. We hung Did out with Dom him? and his girlfriend. Nice. It was quite nice. And then afterwards, yeah. while they were driving to Joshua Tree, we went to uh, this place called Liberty Market in San Diego, which is like old naval barracks that have been converted into um, into like art studios and little shops and stuff. It's like it reminds me of um, Hannah. You remember that like place we went in Lowell? That's called like Mill Nineteen or something. It's like yeah, an old textile yeah. factory. It's been converted into like a hipster mall. It's kind of yeah, like but that. It's like it's like very underground. Like you can't yeah. tell it's a mall from outside. You have to go up to the ninth floor or something. Yeah, you have to like on a rickety you have to walk elevator. Into, like, a nondescript old well, factory sound and then get in an elevator to the third it's floor. The floor. It's oh, you're right. It's overground, yeah. but it's very <laughs> overground. <laughs> <laughs> it is weird. Uh, this is much more uh, in the open. It reminds me also of a little bit of Faneuil Hall. Uh, but it was really nice. I went to this nice tea shop called Point Loma Tea and got uh, I got some nice hojicha that I have haven't been able to find anywhere else except for in bags at a Asian supermarket near me. And I got some ginger tea, some like ginger mm. lemongrass stuff. Kylie nice. got like a mint green tea. I got this jasmine green tea. It's just some good, 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 nice tea. Good. Filling up your tea drawers. But I didn't have time so to make you? any. Oh, you could have gone and made some. No, I had to make my din din. Don't blame this on us. No, I'm not. <laughs> Don't blame this on us. <laughs> oh, I did it. Okay. You know, um, my friend. I had, was having brekkies with my friendy the other day, <laughs> and they got a hojicha latte. Ooh. Yeah, and I tasted it. I was like, maybe let me try it. And I was like, yeah, it tastes like seaweed with some milk in it. <laughs> but to each their own. The fuck is what happened to Ben? Life? He's almost just being oh. weird. He's oh, look at, him, look at him. He's climbing under the, the shade. Yeah, his tail, yeah. Is, wow. his tail is just smacking the window. It's so loud. <laughs> Wow. Um, We're not picking it up. <laughs> we have hojicha. We had hojicha lattes at the tea shop I worked at nice. over the summer. Um, they're pretty good. Oh, I like they the right, I like, like the tea seaweed. More. I don't. I don't get that. If you're into that, <laughs> I don't get the seaweed at all. Interesting. I I actually don't either, but I do find hmm. them quite smoky and bitter. Interesting. Sometimes. It's smoky. I like it. Nice. It's smoky, it's toasty, it's nice. I'm going to try to drink it without thinking about seaweed. But that's like being like, wow, don't think luck. about an elephant right now. Right. Okay, that easy. Awesome? <laughs> <laughs> that makes me... What are ben, you, you what are won. You? you fucking won <laughs> that game, Lannister ben. over there. What are you thinking about right now, Ben? Uh, I'm going to try, try to catch him off guard. Ah. Oh, an <laughs> elephant <laughs> playing baseball. Ah, gotcha. Oh, no. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Uh, Hannah, what are you I have an up for any. I'm oh, sorry. Wait, we didn't oh, what find are you out drinking? Yeah, no, I didn't drink. tell you. What. Hannah, I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> okay. I would freak out if I were you. <laughs> um, first of all, I have a Ooh. Um, crisp <laughs> that Soda Damn. Stream Seltzer. Extremely fizzy, delicious. Delicious. Taking mm-hmm. a sip right now. Look at that. Fizz. We got more of that good. Good fizzy stuff. <laughs> good. Good, good, good. And I have also not a nice tea, but an iced tea. Uh, <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> is it not nice or is it nice and iced? It's bad. It's it's our favorite brand of iced tea that is like pre made. What is? Um it's what is? called Pure Leaf. Is that what it's okay, called? That sure, yeah. Right. I think I've had that. Nice. Yeah. What do you and what do you go for? You go for like unsweet, unsweet with lemon, sweet. Unsweet. I nice. love that pure leaf unsweet iced tea. Nice. I like yes. bitter bitter water. <laughs> <laughs> is that unsweet with- water, Ben, or is that sweet water? <laughs> this is, sweet. This is neutral water. Neutral. Okay. <laughs> like a good electrical socket. Yeah. <laughs> For the listener, Como is absolutely freaking out over Ben's shoulder. He's like, yeah, I don't know. Dying to, I really jump out don't the know what he's trying to do. Oh, oh he just <laughs> fell. 
That's funny. <laughs> now he's nuzzling my hand because he's nice. No, now wow. he's like, oh, I didn't fall. I was, <laughs> I was, I was getting down on my own. It was fine. It was fine. <laughs> I'm not a. I'm. I'm. I've, I'm a black tea person in every sense. I've never put like any cream or sugar in hot tea Neither. either. Mm. I like it the way it is, just the way it is. It doesn't just, have to just change like for me. Tea. You are. I like milk yeah. in my hot tea sometimes. I picked that up when we were in London together. Just something yeah. about it. I do recall that. Yeah. We had some fancy teas in London. We were pretty fancy. Blech. <laughs> <laughs> she burps. <laughs> I said we were. I said we are. So we were. So. Um, right off the top, sort of, I want to give a shout out to our right our brother, um, Lucas, who has been listening and trying to. Oh my god! Use to- <laughs> what that reminds me? I feel so bad about this now. <laughs> the what? last time we were recording, in the middle of recording. I had texted Lucas about some random shit earlier in the day, and he just responded not to that, but just said, I love you, bro, exclamation point. And I'm just <laughs> realizing now I forgot to answer him. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh my god, Ben. That was on Thursday. I'm gonna answer him now. What a bad brother. Wow, I feel like <laughs> shit. Yeah, you should. You need, you need to... Um, you need to start re... For, for, to make up for that... You need to start bringing in ginger ale again and bring back that thing about tasting the chaos because he he really thinks we've been missing out on making that joke. Taste the chaos. Yeah. Taste yeah. the chaos. <laughs> and he made a really good point, which is that like it's very funny that Kylie said that about ginger ale because in his opinion, <laughs> that's like maybe the least chaotic of all of the carbonated beverages. That's pretty true. He brings up a good point because that's a drink that you drink when you're like having a stomach flu or a yeah. it's like yeah. absolutely not chaotic yeah yeah it's it's like specifically <laughs> supposed to stop chaos mm-hmm. it's like a very tame drink yeah. Yeah. it like wrangles in the chaos it's like taste the calming effect <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but i also agree with kylie it's, these two truths can exist together at the same time it's uh what's that called that's uh, beautiful <laughs> <laughs> what's that called <laughs> It's called beautiful, <laughs> but there's a specific word for just that, where the two conflicting truths are both true. A uh, ham and egg. Oh, I don't know. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I said ham and egg. <laughs> <laughs> two conflicting truths. Yeah, it's a ham and How egg. How can both you know ham I... and egg be breakfast food? You know what I mean? It's a... It's a classic yeah. ham and egg situation. <laughs> Oh, yep, that's yeah, it. Yeah, everyone knows it's a cla- that. It's, a classic it's an idiom that everyone in America knows. <laughs> it's a classic ham and egg situation. So. Yeah. Ginger ale, case the chaos, classic <laughs> ham and egg situation. That sentence makes 100% perfect sense to me and any good American. <laughs> Wait, ginger ale, taste the chaos, feel the calming effect, classic ham and egg situation. <laughs> <laughs> But what's that word, though? I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? It's a... Scottenfreud. No. <laughs> it's a... Uh, I'm gonna come up with it later. It's fine. Not come up with it as in make it up. But like, I'm gonna think of it. I'm gonna think of it. Aww. But shout out to Lucas. What's up? He's not my brother, but he's my brother. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, he's a he good dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's a classic ham and egg situation. It's a classic ham and egg. <laughs> yeah. He's not my brother, but he's my brother. Yeah. Yeah, classic, classic. ham and egg. <laughs> yeah, he's he's Benson, my brother, and he's Aaron's cousin. Is that too but, much information? But he's, no. like, he's like my brother. You know what but I mean? He's your brother. Yeah, right. So. He's your brother. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, um, Erin, you said you had an out front thing, though, right? Yeah, so Molly and I watched, um, I Think You Should Leave. It's mm. really funny, it's really fucking weird. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I had yeah. less, like, laugh out loud moments, and more, like, like, uncontrollable, like, shaking, but, and also, like, what the fuck? <laughs> but Molly and I have this thing that we do where it's, like, pretty classic, where we'll watch an episode, and then I'll pause to, like, get up and pee, or, like, we'll pause to, like, clear the dishes, 
and we'll pause when there's like two minutes left in the episode. Yeah. It's like classic. We do it all the time. And so this time we watched in one night a lot of episodes and then we were like, let's save some for later. So we paused <laughs> in the middle of an episode. There was like ten minutes left. I was like, great. You know, we didn't do our classic thing. And then t- we sat down to dinner tonight to watch the rest of the series, and it was just those ten minutes. <laughs> we had watched all the episodes at once except for ten minutes, <laughs> and we watched the ten minutes tonight. And I was like, wow, this is like the bigger version of our classic situation. <laughs> so I wanted to mention that. But we really enjoyed it. It was funny. It's fun- it was funny and a really, like... Like, Portlandia, I find, like, funny in, like, a really, like, laugh-out-loud way. This was, like, funny in a, like, deeply, deeply weird way. Yeah, it was very, very weird. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. I felt, I feel like I, like, I can't, there are very few sketches from it, even, like, a week or two after having watched it that I remember specifically, but when I see the, like, stills and gifs and stuff and clips that are starting to pop up on Twitter... <clears throat> Every one of them is like, "Wow, that actually happened!" Like it's almost like I thought I dreamed like it was that. A fever like that's dream. how weird it is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I feel like I've thought about something. I'm like, "Where did that come into my head from?" I'm like, "Oh, it was that. It was that show." <laughs> but we watched. We watched like 99 percent of it. Like. The other day. There were days and days in between. I was watching 99% of it, and then the last very 10 minutes of it. It's really short. Yeah. The episode so they learned, short. yeah. Yeah, we really learned. And, like, to say the last 10 minutes, the episodes are, like, 15 minutes long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it actually wasn't. It was probably less than 10 minutes. It was probably, like, five minutes. It was probably, like, two sketches. And yeah. it was over. It was fast. That's cool. Yeah. I, I, I watched some videos from King Princess. As oh, from. nice. I haven't seen any of her videos. I watched the video for Pussy is God. I keep on hearing about I that. I love that people song. Too. Yeah, it's very good. And then um, the video is good, too. She has, like, this uh, crazy, like, shiny, like, jumpsuit thing. Oh, nice. I'll have to watch that video. Like, it's, a, it's I say jumpsuit, but it's like a, it's like a, it's like a nightgown, not a nightgown. What am I thinking? Pajamas? It's like pajamas, but it's like shiny and like uh, hugs the body in certain ways, but also in other ways just looks like pajamas. It's just cool. Mm. I like it. Um, yeah, and I watched a couple of her other videos, and she's pretty awesome. Yeah. I've Do really been that. listening to a lot of her music, which mm. she doesn't have much. So She's only 20. What? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because I was watching her videos, and, like, she has a very mature voice, and, like, uh, she's a great, like, songwriter, but I was like, she looks so young. How young is she? And then... Wow. I'm kind of sorry that I know now, because yeah. it makes me feel old. Yeah. Well, in her About section in Spotify, it says that she was, uh... A y- she's a young mu- music prodigy, so it's not her, it's it's not us, it's her. She's You're like right. a, She's a prodigy. You're right. Probably I'm not pro- a prodigy. Prodigy? Prodigy. Prodigy. She's a prodigy. She's a frog. <laughs> froggity frog. Awesome. Any other upfront stuff? I don't have much this week. I feel like I had something, but it's poof gone. Um, I also felt like I had another one, uh, but I guess I don't. That's a good use of, of pod space time. <laughs> space time. The pod space time continuum. <laughs> okay, well then let's pop in. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, pop, drop, and lock it. Let's do it. Well yeah, said. Yeah, exactly. Who's first? Um, Aaron is first. I'm first. Okay. <laughs> Hello. We're popped. Okay. <sighs> I have a bit of guilty pleasure as my Ooh, obsession okay. this week. So... I'm somebody who, when somebody confesses to me that they have a guilty pleasure, I say to them, there's no such thing as a guilty pleasure. (laughs) I don't believe in guilty pleasures, is what I'll say. You shouldn't Mm. feel guilt over the things that you like. So that I believe that, but I also, like, felt like, uh, like, this is a little vulnerable for me to be sharing this as my, as my obsession, but it's my truth. So I bring it to you today. So, uh, I'm obsessed with this line of um like uh lesbian romance 
audiobooks. And I know that's not, like, a first for me. I like, a, a lot of my obsessions have been, like, specific lesbian fiction audiobooks. Mm-hmm. But this is, like, truly, like, lesbian romances. I mean, it's, like, a romance category. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And they're by the author Radcliffe. She, like, goes by... what? What is that where, where their pen name is, like... Just like one word. What do they call that? Mononym. Is that, Mononym. Yeah. Is that it? Is that it? Way to go, Ben. Yeah. You like wove that from from, the, from your brain. From whole cloth. Like thread by thread. She goes by the mononym Radcliffe. R A D C L Y F F E. And uh. I believe that's uh, from Radcliffe Hall, The Well of Loneliness. Well of Loneliness Daniel. by oh, Loneliness <clears throat> by Radcliffe Hall with a uh, I think I believe it's taken from that um, author's name. But anyway, what I like about these books is they're like definitely romance books. They're like not very deep, but they're interesting. I think they're really interesting, and they've got like good, you know, romance. You know, stuff to them. They're, you know, they got some sussy parts. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of them. I think one of my favorite things is that there's, like, a whole lot of them. Like, she has uh, 67 on on Audible alone. Wow. And, and it's just, like, great for, like, my commute. It's great when I'm doing chores. Wait, like, that's I'll so do- many books. I know. <laughs> and that's not, like, even all of her books. So another really interesting thing is she used to be a surgeon. So she's, like... Um, a retired surgeon, and so a lot of her books are, like, to do with, um, you know, the the main characters are doctors or surgeons, or they, you know, or, like, firefighters, or I think there's some with, like, the military. And so yeah. there's a lot of, like, um, trauma scenes or hospital scenes, and they're all very detailed, but you know that they're they're accurate, because she used to do that for, for a living. And so it's just really interesting. They're they're a little formulaic. Some of them are have like really funny, um, you know, lines that I just kind of smile or sometimes I'll like repeat out loud uh, as I'm like <laughs> by myself, just like in disbelief. But on the whole, I, I I really enjoy them and am grateful that they exist and have been. I've listened to like one and a half this week. This hmm. week? No, I finished one. This I finished one over the weekend. I listened to one last week, and I'm on track to like finish one, another one this week. How many They're just hours like, are audiobooks usually? It really depends. Like the first one I read this week was <clears throat> against doctor's orders, and it was <laughs> <laughs> nine hours and eight minutes. And then I'm <laughs> I'm listening to Prescription for Love, which is seven <laughs> hours and six minutes. So that's like a pretty. Those titles are incredible. I know. This is like. <laughs> This is what I'm saying. This is, like, what fills me with, I, like... Prescription for love is just... <laughs> you just... I know. You just, like, know what's gonna what happen. What kind of book that is right away. I know. <laughs> you know what kind of book it is. I know what's gonna happen within, like, the first two chapters. Like, you yeah. meet the two characters, and I'm like, okay, you know, she... You know, the, the you know cocky surgeon who has, you know, walls around her heart is going to, like, have them torn down by the newcomer in town. But I'm, I'm, like, here for it. I'm like, yeah, let's hear let's hear how that happens. And, and it's really nice. Yeah. There's a trans character in um, the book I'm currently listening, that I'm currently having read to me, um, <laughs> which is great. Like, I, I haven't really come across that. And the, I, I really it, it, like the way that it's been, per- that, that he's been portrayed and it's been handled. Um, yeah, this is part of the Rivers Family Romance series. Um, I was about to. Yes, yeah, so you're just working your way through. Those. I'm working my way through those. I'm interested to see because the first two narrators are different for the books, but then the third through the fifth are the same. So I hope I like her. Um, <laughs> you know, it can be kind of hit or miss depending on the romance or by, uh, depending on the on the narrator. Like the narrator for Prescription for Love. Portray some of the characters' voices as a little huskier than I would go for. But, hmm. you know, beggars can't be choosers when you're having a lesbian romance book read to you, you know, while you go about your daily business. So, <laughs> yeah, these are some <coughs> books that I just, like, really... I'll just, like, go in waves. Like, I'll, like, listen to, you know, some of these and then 
want to re- want to listen to something else, but then I'll just like get a real craving to like listen to some of these and just the like... wanting comes in waves. <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> sorry. Okay, do you know she has a whole series of books ca- um, that take place in Provincetown called the Provincetown Tales? I did. I feel like I did see that, but I don't know if I've read any of those ones. Well, I mean, I thought you only read two. No, 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 no. I've read more. I'm I've, uh, like last week I finished against Doctor's Orders, and then this week I'm on Prescription for Love. But I've read some of these others. Uh, oh, I guess I should I've, go to my now, library. I've never read. I don't think I've ever read a book or listen to a book that would be described specifically as a romance novel. Yeah. However, I, I don't think okay. I have either. Uh, however, um, this kind of reminds me of the way that I got for a time with the um, Sookie Stackhouse novels, which mm. are what True Blood was based on. Oh, yeah. Um, be- and those had a ton of sex in them. <laughs> Yeah, but, but they were like also like a va- you know vampire uh, story and had a, a lot of other things going on as well, and I, also they were pretty exclusively hetero uh, mm-hmm. stuff, hetero slash like lady and vampire slash lady and werewolf stuff. Mm. So like, but <laughs> but like, which you can hardly call hetero. <laughs> 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 but they were like very. Um, they were very formulaic in some ways. Actually, uh, to be honest, I, there was a lot of stuff in there that was, like, I think very creative. Like, I actually mm-hmm. think I liked some of the way- ways that the books went more than the ways that the TV show ended up going in a lot of ways. You know, I was talking um, to Kylie the other day about how the premise for True Blood, I think, is really cool, actually. Yeah. And, and like, there was this, there mm-hmm. was this thing that they kind of, it felt like they were shoehorning in towards the end, not to spoil this many years old HBO show about Sookie, like, being a fairy. Um, mm, yeah. But in the books, that was actually a thing. And, and I think they did a better job of building it from the beginning and, like, actually, like, like, continuing to build the world around that concept as well. Um, and, you know, just kind of like, I like the whole thing of, like, being, you know, just exploring this world where uh, all, any and all of these things were possible at the same mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Like, if there can be vampires, why couldn't there be fairies and stuff? It was cool. Yeah. But it definitely was the sort of thing that I would just, like, absolutely crave. Mm-hmm. Like, it, if we had been doing the podcast at that time, I would have absolutely been talking mm-hmm. endlessly about Sookie Stackhouse and her many boyfriends. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another thing I like about this, um, these books is that they, all the characters in most of the ones I read. So I read also by Radcliffe, Passion's Bright Fury, uh, <laughs> Turn Back Time, which I believe I liked a lot. Trauma Alert, First Responders book. Um, is that like her characters aren't? They're they're never coming out stories. All of her characters are like already gay, and a lot of the people in the books are gay. It's almost like almost an alternate reality in that it's more. It's there are more gay people than there aren't gay people, which is really an interesting. Like it, you're like this feels it feels strange, but then if you think about like, you know, a book with all like hetero romances, like it would be common for like all of the dudes to be talking about women, right? And so in these Mm. these books, all of the women, all of the coworkers, like are all gay. They're all gay, and they're all talking about that. You know, there's there are some like mentions of. You know, women who are with men, but they're very much like background characters at best. So that's really interesting and something that yeah. is fun, is kind of fun. Yeah, that's cool. She also write. Oh, sorry. I just said that's cool. Yeah, it is cool. Bad. That's why I said. <laughs> <laughs> she also writes under another pseudonym, LL Rand, and those are paranormal romance series. So that might hey. be something that you're interested in, Hannah, because they're. I assume they're paranormal and also gay, because she's like. Just very much a lesbian. I mean, <laughs> as much well, as you can get. I just downloaded the first um, Provincetown one. Oh, okay, cool. We'll What's the title there? there? Safe Harbor. Oh, cool. Well, I'm downloading it, actually. Forgive me. <laughs> uh, so, sometimes in the romance books, I don't know if you've seen this, because I guess you haven't, because you haven't listened to any, 
um, Audible gives like a how steamy is it rating, and the first, the Midnight Hunt, Midnight Hunters book gets a hot damn. I did see that. Um, so did Safe Harbor. <laughs> Got a hot damn. I've oh, never seen a rating that high, actually. What's the scale? Oh, right. Wow. What does the scale go to? From sweet, so here's it from lowest to highest bent. Sweet, simmering, sizzling, hot damn. Oh, oh. OMG. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, that's true. Let me Hot see damn. the summary. Yeah. Oh, can I read the publisher summary for this LL Rand Midnight Hunters book? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do when you wake up to a whole new life with dangerous urges you can't control? Medic, again with the medics. Medic Drake McKinnon has never been good at following protocol, so she doesn't think twice about rendering emergency care when a teenager's life is at stake, even if the young girl is in the throes of wear fever and any sane human should know better. Isn't it isn't the bright shining pain of the bite or even the wrenching agonies of fever that convinces Drake everything in her life has changed. It's the way she feels about the blonde with the wolf gold eyes who awakens a dark hunger she can't control and doesn't want to. This is like Basically, it, this sounds like her other book premises where it's like set in an emergency room, except with also a paranormal aspect <laughs> to it. I love it. <laughs> Can I just say wolf gold is not a thing? Not in your world, Ben, but in her world it is. Um, I want to, okay, I want to I wanna tell you about a, a review I just read um, for, for another one of the L.L. Rand books called The Magic Hunt, which I like the cover of, and I'm probably going to also download, um, because I have a bunch of Audible credits. Uh, It's got an overall 4.8 stars, which is great. Um, But the first rating is 3 stars. Um, The uh, the name of the rating is Weak, and there's a question, you know, is there anything you would change about this book? And the answer they give is, Yes, I would leave out too much sex. <laughs> <laughs> this next question is, would you recommend the magic hunt to your friends? Why or why not? Yes and no, because it's too much sex. The story is a good one, but really no one wants to picture dogs doing it. Oh. <laughs> I like that they said I would leave out too much sex. Yes. That sounds like if they wrote it, there wouldn't be enough sex in it. Okay, any additional comments? She re- she needs to stop all the sex just to clear up space. That's what I think she is doing. It should be label erotica and stop making the werewolves so dang weak. In two hours, they are in love. The story is good. I like the action when she gets to it. The a- but not the action. Not the action. Did you say that this is book five? Of a series, so don't No, but I like the cover the best. But you have to listen to the rest of the Midnight Hunters. Uh. Starting with the Midnight Hunt, which you just heard the synopsis for, you gotta figure out what wolf gold means. (laughs) Okay. That's funny. I will say, like, I like her sex scenes. I'll say it. Like, I feel like they're good. She does a good job. I feel like she would not merit a hot damn rating if they weren't good. They're good. They're good. I like these books. Are they, you know, going to win a literary awards? I think some have. I don't know. <laughs> I like them. So anyway. You like them. Yep. They sound good. Yeah. They're nice. I'm happy they exist for me to listen to. Good. Cool. Well, but great obsession, Erin. Thank Very you for cool. sharing Thanks. I I still don't believe there's such thing as a guilty pleasure. I'm on the, your same page. Yeah, I also feel that way, but it's hard to, you know, practice what you preach in that regard. So that mm-hmm. was me doing that. I'm flexing my no such thing as guilty pleasure muscle. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Does it feel strong? Yeah, it feels uh, so strong. Stronger than ever before. <laughs> um, I, I just remembered I did have another upfront thing, which is that um, t- this... Uh, past well, it was yesterday actually. We went this past day. My um, Ian and I went to my parents' house to eat some birthday cake because we forgot to eat it on my mom's actual birthday, which was this weekend on Mother's Day. Happy birthday! Happy Mother's birthday! Happy Mother's birthday, Opera. <laughs> Happy Aunt's birthday. <laughs> it will have been a week ago by the time she's hearing this, but uh, I said it to her on the day. So, um, 
and uh, then we like we're all hanging out together, and everybody started looking at their phones, and I realized. Um, all of a sudden that it was because everyone in the room except for me was playing GeoGuessr on their devices. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is so nice. Yeah, so it's made a big impact on our, on our at least a small percentage of our listeners. It's tearing the family apart. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Well, we were all kind of like helping each other out a little bit. Our, if we could have played it on the screen Our dad does not together. agree that you can't Google things. He, well, that's a big shocker. He told us that his rule is that if he he can't Google until he fig, like starts to figure out where like what part of the world he's in, and then if he feels like it's a part of the world that he would have cell phone signal in, then he can Google things. <laughs> so basically, his rule is he can do whatever the fuck he feels like doing, which is true. But like Ian, <laughs> Ian was pretty. Uh, he was like brainstorming. Like our arguments against Googling with me in the car on the way over to their house. That's hilarious. I feel like it's rude to just like disregard the rules that Ian labors over for hours. <laughs> for hours. He, he puts like, a he, lot of thought into them. I know. I'm like, I'm sure he's thought about this way more than I have. So he, it's just rude. It's rude to not listen to them. That's what I feel. It is just a lot better if you didn't Google. You just yeah. feel powerful. So. <laughs> makes sense to me yeah well that's awesome radcliffe novels we're like rad cliff that's her name that's her that's her literal pen name rad and she might also have her own uh she also is like an editor i think she has her own like publishing company is it so, called bold strokes books <laughs> yeah i wasn't gonna say it <laughs> I'm on that website. I just wasn't sure if that if this was just a site that's that sells her books or if it's like she has both strokes book and she also has her own website too. It's oh, I was just on it. Oh, radfic dot com. Ah, rad fuck. Yeah, it might as well be <laughs> rad. Oh, and she drives a motorcycle. That doesn't surprise me because a lot of her love interests drive a motorcycle. <laughs> a lot of the love interests in the books. It's motorcycle season. Yeah. Your motorcycle season. <laughs> cool. Ben. Ben. Should we move to Ben? Pop into Ben. Ben. Hello. Hello. I'm Ben. You got, you got ben. it right. Thank you. Uh, it's Thanks me. for noticing. It's me now. It's time hey, you for know. me to talk about me, me obsession. Yay. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's what, it's what we call in the biz a video game. Video oh. game. Um, it's a video, video game, game that came out a couple years ago that Kylie played right when it came out that she was very, very excited for. And then she has uh, asked me to play it for so long and I haven't, not for any particular reason. I just, I just haven't for a while. And then the other day, uh, I was like, "What do you want to do?" And she was like, "I want to draw while you play this game." And I was like, "Okay." And then nice. we did that. Uh, it's called Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, yeah. you ever heard of it? Either of use? No, I've heard of it, but I don't know anything about it. Okay, it's an open world RPG game. Mm-hmm. Um. And it takes place, it's like a post-apocalyptic game, mm-hmm. um, and it takes place after some sort of, some sort of thing has happened. You don't, you don't know from the start all the details of what exactly happened to the world, but all you do know is that there are now uh, these machines everywhere that are... Um, Shape. They're they're like designed after different animals. Some of them are like designed for real animals. Like there's some that like are made to kind of be like horses, and then there's some that are like kind of like dino, big dinosaurs. Um, mm-hmm. And they're aggressive as fuck. Oh, and they want to kill people, wow. and people hunt them for their parts and stuff. And they seem to be able to like create themselves, and they like they're they're coming from somewhere no one really knows where and they're also new ones being created somehow and no one really knows how uh and the whole it's it's such a cool aesthetic for the game because it's like 
um you you the, the world is like very tribal now like you 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 play a character who like grew up in this tribe called the Nora um who like everyone's armor and stuff is like made of old metal and like electric stuff like and they have like uh necklaces and stuff made of like old wires like it's a lot of cool mm-hmm. the, the, the 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 like designs for this game are really really neat uh hey como como's coming hey, back Como. Um, Sue's back. Guess Sue's back. And oh, oh hey, <laughs> bud. He's giving him face muscles. <laughs> you he play- like always does this like during your segment. He like hears you talking more, and he's like, "Oh, I miss my, I miss my dad." <laughs> hey, buddy. Okay, I gotta talk now, bud. Oh, you're biting me. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. This is this is a lot. <laughs> um, he plays a character named Aloy, who actually grew up as an outcast from your tribe, mm. because uh, the circumstances of your birth are really mysterious. And this is a you, you, the Nora tribe is a matriarchal society, and mm. they like their their god is called the All Mother, and they're ruled by uh, these like elderly women that are called the matriarchs, and um, people who are who don't have a mother are really like considered to be cursed because mm. they value motherhood so much. Um, mm. and you don't have a mother. And as a mm. kid, you fall into these like ruins of the old world, like before the, before the apocalypse that they call the metal world, uh, mm. because it's like all made of metal and shit. And you start to kind of get a glimpse, you being like the player and I guess Aloy also, of what the world was like before this happened. Because you find this this little earpiece thing called a focus that um, allows you to gain access to... You find a bunch of dead bodies that also have these things on, and they have, like, recorded messages in them where Hmm. they talk about, like, how uh, everything's super fucked up and how um, some of them are talking about, like, how they're they're like kind of being forced to take medication just to like accept that they're all going to die right now like it's like super like weird weird and ominous stuff you find out um mm. and then pretty early on in the game you discover that you were born the the, the like the Nora the, the like i mentioned their god is called the All Mother and mm-hmm. they, they like physically think that this mountain that they live near where there's this giant door is like where the all mother is. They call it like the, I think they call it the womb of the all mother or something. And you, you find out that that's where Aloy was found as a baby, mm. just like in the mountain inside the all mother, which mm. you realize is, you realize as a player is like a piece of old technology. And she's like, for some reason recognized genetically by this, uh, by this, uh, by this old technology, as this other woman, who looks a lot like her but with short hair, hmm. and you don't know who she is, but she's obviously like a person from the like pre-apocalypse times. And uh, your her tri- Aloy's tribe is like attacked, and she ends up being a- appointed what's called a seeker, which allows her to leave her tribe's sacred lands without being exiled. And to, uh, she's tasked kind of with exploring her, her past because that's kind of the only lead that anyone has on what the fuck is going on. Cause everyone has kind of, everyone's kind of noticed that the machines are getting more and more aggressive over the past like decade. And like I said, they're making new ones, which no one knows how they're doing. And the only lead anyone really has is that Aloy was found from these ruins and that she, is for some reason related to them. No one really knows how. Um, But the combat in this game is super fun. It's like mostly bow and arrow based, which is really neat because you're like Mm. fighting these super high tech machines, but you're like shooting them with bow and arrow to kill them. And you like can find their weak points and shit. And uh, there's just like, it's just a really fun game. The voice acting is really good. Aloy is, um, played by Ashley Birch, who is the same voice actor who played Chloe in um, Life is Strange. 
Mm. So she's very, very good. She was also on Critical Role for quite a few episodes as a guest guest uh, person. Um, and the story is really interesting, like that, because because like it's as much a mystery for you as it is for Aloy. Like what you're like, wait, what? How is she? How could she possibly be related to this world that's like long mm. gone and. You know, um, and I, I did, I watched Kylie play most of the game a while ago, so I, like, know some of the, some spoilers of, like, what it is, but I don't really remember them, which is exciting. That's great. I love that when your shitty memory works for you. Yeah, because I'm, like, gonna, I'm still gonna be surprised by, like, new, new developments in this plot. <laughs> um, and, yeah, it's just a good, it's just a good, fun game. It looks beautiful. It's, it's yeah, amazingly really beautiful, and we I've just got a, we just got a new shots. TV. That's part of the reason why why I finally decided to play is we just got a new bigger TV. Mm. That's so much nicer, and my god, it looks so fucking good. It's like it's so polished and just like Aloy has this long, long, long red hair that just looks mm-hmm. so fucking cool, and she's got a lot of different. Um, like armor you can wear that all looks just super dope all of it's just it's just the aesthetics of the game alone are amazing i just like can't believe these are screenshots i know it's game. insane even when you're I'm playing like, it surely this is like you know a movie or yeah <laughs> yeah i'm watching uh some gameplay video as well it's the combat is so fun when did it come out I want to say 2016? 2017. 20, oh, wow, it's that new. 2017. Yeah, February. 20, was, early. It's like, it's like a, a year past. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, is that new? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one year later than I thought? Than I wow. guess? <laughs> I, yeah, I think yeah, it, it don't came beat out, yourself I up. I think it actually came out around Kylie's birthday. Oh. Because I feel like she was super excited about it, and it turned out... It was coming out like on or near her birthday. Let me check I just that. never knew this is what this was at all. I mean, we don't have a. There's a second one coming out too. Four. Oh, it did come out on her birthday. It came out on her birthday in 2017. Wow! Did it come out yeah. on her it came birthday? Out on her birthday, February 28th. Uh, 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 on, on her, her 20, birthday? 21st birthday. Wow! Uh, on yeah. her birthday. On her birthday. On her. On her birthday. On her birthday. On her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> on, on, her, mm. <laughs> Great contribution, Ben. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so cool, like a, like tribal, but with robots. Yeah, with robots tribal animals. with robots. That's what. That's if I had to sum this game up in three words: tribal with robots. <laughs> nice way to capture the essence of this yeah. obsession, Hannah. Thank it's you. It's very good. Oh my god! And the, you know what's. This is this is like a small thing because it's like the very beginning of the game, but like, um, the first I would say like hour of gameplay is basically going through Aloy's childhood, and like you play in parts of it as like kid Aloy. And number one, the little kid Aloy is so fucking cute; Aww. it's great. And uh, number two, it's like really cool. Because, like, a lot of times when you play a video game, especially, like, an open-world game like that, your character will have all of these, like, amazing physical capabilities that normal humans don't really have unless they've, like, trained for years, right? And, like, Mm -hmm. this... The the beginning of the game is, like, the, the backstory as to why Aloy is so fucking strong and, like, physically capable. Because there's this thing called the proving that that happens every year in her tribe... And when you're old enough to run in the proving, outcasts are allowed to run in as well. If you, it's like an obstacle course kind of that. If you, if you get through all of it, you become a, a what's called a brave, which is like a warrior for the tribe. And even if you're an outcast, you can become a brave, which welcomes you back into the tribe. And mm. if you win, if you come in first place, you get. Uh, I think it's. I think it's. You get a boon from the matriarchs, which basically means a favor. You know. Um, yeah, wow. So like, and her favor is cuz when she's a kid she just she sees that 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 little that woman that looks like her but not really her and she's like is that my mother i need to find out more 
And so she like decides then I'm going to win the proving so I can find out the truth from the matriarchs because they're the only ones that know anything about my birth. And mm. that's like her motivation for training her whole life wow. up to that moment. It's super cool. That's neat. Yeah, it's just good. That's Listen, it sounds it's just good, good. Okay? Is it good, though? God, it's just good, okay? Did it come out on her birthday? It came out <laughs> on Kylie's birthday, and it's good. Why won't you tell us it's, if it came out on her birthday or not? I'm sorry, I forgot. It came out on her birthday. Oh, okay, nice. Um, That's cool. I had a dream in November of that same year that involved the All-Mother. What? It, Why did your eyes go weird? <laughs> you could that didn't translate to pop, but she had like an eye. She made an eye point after she said that. <laughs> well, because you mentioned the all mother, and I remembered it from an episode description of So Dreamy. So I went back to look, and in and um, uh, in episode one of my other podcast, So Dreamy, we talked about one of my dreams in which I. Uh, I think what happened, although it was a long time ago, was that a woman was trying to become the All Mother. Did it live in the womb of a mountain? No, I think she was like doing other devious witchy things to try to become the All Mother. I'm gonna go back and listen to it now because I had not heard anything about this game that I had never heard the term All Mother before, to my knowledge. That's weird. But, yeah. There you go. Wow. Dreams be freaky. Does Coincidence? I wow. think so. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's it yeah. for me. It's a good game. Cool. You should very stream fun, it. Very fun to watch people play. Yeah. Can you stream it? I uh, probably can. You should do that. <sighs> you should do that. You're I would watch nerd. it. Maybe I can yeah, do I that. Yeah, I would watch it. I would watch it. You flip. Yeah. People would watch it. People, some people would watch it. I want to stream GeoGuessr, just to bring that back around. Do it, nerd. A couple people do. But I don't have a setup for it. But anyway, that's cool. I would so watch you play GeoGuessr. Kesher. I watch you play GeoGuessr. (laughs) (laughs) It drops Kesha. The uh, uh, singer somewhere in the world, and you have to <laughs> guess where she is. You have to guess her. Yeah, where she? Where is she? Where guess her where Geo Kesha is. Guess her where Kesha. I'd watch that. <laughs> okay, well sure, I don't sure know. Slip. Ben, maybe you can give me some tips about how to friggin' stream. Okay, Stram. it's very easy if you're just screaming, screaming, if you're just streaming a computer game. <laughs> screaming. <laughs> just screaming a computer you're game. You're just screaming. <laughs> I'm going to stream myself screaming. Is that good? Is that a good one? Yeah, it'll get viewers. Scream, stream. It would get viewers. Yeah, people are weird. Um, Cool. Well, great one, Ben. That looks Thanks. awesome. Thanks. Um, welcome to me now. Yes. Okay. Welcome to you. All right. No. My obsession is a book. A what book. Is the book. An author whose name is Shirley Jackson. Oh, Shirley. I think at least one of you may have Don't call read me Shirley. this book. <laughs> I know that at least one or two of our listeners have read this book. It's a mm. it's a classic. It's in a Penguin's classic. Oh, uh, packet, penguins! Er, pe- yeah, penguins. Um, the it's it's in the Penguin Orange Collection, uh, for whatever that's worth, and it's called "We Have Always Lived in the Castle." Great, m- great title. Yes. Never read it. Never freaking read it. Never even heard of it. It features a cat prominently. That's cool. His name is Jonas. So, That's not a cat name. That's a human name. Ridiculous. It's this cat's name. I like it as a cat's name, actually. But anyway, it's about... Um, I don't want to give too much away. So, have you guys read any of any other of Shirley Jackson's like books or stories? Like, The Lottery is hers. Um, 
But that's a short story. It's not a novel. That does sound Everybody familiar. Everybody has read what The Lottery. It's, it's the one where you usually you read it in, like, um, high school English where um, there's a lottery that's going to happen and it's in, like, a small town one day and everyone's just talking about the lottery and, and worrying about it. And then when the lottery happens, it turns out whoever's name gets chosen gets, like, stoned to death and they do it once a year. To wow. ensure like a like a crop or something, but but the other one she she wrote is the I don't um, think the haunting I've read of, that actually. It's a short story, but it's really really good. It's it's good because of the twist that I just ruined at the end and the way that she foreshadows <laughs> it being very good. So it would be a good book to anybody who didn't listen to this particular segment. Everyone has read I'm just surprised, like, of all the people I've talked to about this book, like, so few of them had read The Lottery, but it was like, everyone, I thought everyone had read that. But anyway, so I've ruined it for every person I've talked so, to. So you, so you, so you had evidence before you decided to spoil it <laughs> that a lot of people haven't read it, and you still went ahead and did it. <laughs> It's, it's still so worth true. reading. It's still it's worth reading. <laughs> that is true. I feel like she's trying to pretend like she's like horrified <laughs> that she's ruined it, but she actually like really enjoys ruining it for <laughs> It's just, it's just like it doesn't sound common. familiar. Let me tell you the whole synopsis. Of the <laughs> and uh, does that still sound familiar? No. Oh well, you don't no need to read it now. <laughs> you should still Take read it. it. I know. I, I will. It's just a short story. It's this small. You're but a short story. Um, thank you. But it, but uh, have you read The Haunting of Hill House? No, that's a Netflix no. show, though. It is, but it was a book by her first that was quite different. I've never, I've never even um, watched the Netflix show. Oh, well, Ben. Don't. I thought everyone who went to English class watched that Netflix oh, someone show. Someone better spoil it for me. <laughs> I don't. I didn't. Well, I didn't watch it. I'm sorry. I can't. To be honest, this sounds like the title of a book I would purposely not read, just because it sounds spooky. It is spooky. Her her books are very um, spooky, spooky, but in in an extremely artful spooky way. way. Oh. So Tried something like <laughs> <laughs> they're spooky, but in a spooky, in an extremely <laughs> spooky way. <laughs> Okay, let us let us let Hannah talk about her obsession. Uh, are you um, sure you don't want me to just guess what she's gonna say? <laughs> I don't know. It's going pretty well so far. Okay, so what I think Shirley Jackson is really good at, as evidenced by the lottery and everything of hers that I've read, is that um, she's really good at letting the reader know that something really spooky is going on without. <laughs> like stating anything outright that would allow you to understand or guess what the spooky thing is. So mm. like with the lottery, you do not get that payoff until the very end of this short story with this mm. book. I'm like, you know, and it's still a fairly short book, but like I am most of the way through this book and I've learned a lot of things about these characters and I still don't feel like I know Everything. I feel like there are still a lot of mm. secrets buried with this family. So the the non spoiler synopsis of this book that I can give you so far, and I I couldn't spoil it all if I wanted to because I haven't finished it yet. And you do is, want to? I do want to. Evidence <laughs> 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 in anecdotes. She does indeed want to. Yeah. Um. Actually, let me see. Oh, I, okay. Okay. I'll just read you this. <laughs> actually, I could read the last page. <laughs> read the last couple sentences to you. She always saves the spoil for that. I'm going to read you the synopsis in the, okay. in the book jacket. Delving deep into a labyrinth of dark neurosis, We Have Always Lived in the Castle is a deliciously unsettling novel about a perverse, isolated, and possibly murderous family and the struggle that ensues when outside forces disrupt their delicate way of life. Mary Catherine, Maricat Blackwood, among the first memorable narrators in 20th, um, 20th century fiction lives in the Blackwood family home with the reclusive company of only her sister Constance, once accused of fatally poisoning her own family, and her uncle Julian, confined to a wheelchair and obsessed with his ongoing memoirs. Together they have grown comfortable with a quiet, isolated existence, despite continual persecution by the townsfolk. But when their estranged cousin Charles arrives at the estate armed with 
overtures of friendship and a desperate need to get into her father's safe, Maricat must do everything in her power to protect her remaining family. At once disturbing and delightful, Shirley Jackson's masterful final novel may be her best of all. Wow. Wow. That's right. She's a gothic. She writes gothic suspense. You know, I'm reading on her Wikipedia page that one of the authors who cites her as an influence is Sarah Waters, who is my favorite author. (gasps) Yeah, she's very famous. Like, you guys are the weird ones, not me. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, did we call you weird? (laughs) You said a lot of mean things to me. Just because of the spoiling. I think, okay. Just on account of all the spoiling is all. You did just give a major spoiler that you knew was a spoiler after we told you that we hadn't read that story. I'm not really. You all said that it upset sounded familiar. You said wow, you she died so young. Yeah, this is sad. I was reading about how she died. It was sad. How did she oh, die? No, just like a bunch of problems and being put on a bunch of medications and just kind yeah. of, you know, alcoholism. Just like bad, bad times. Bad that stuff. That sucks. Yeah. In well, this book, I want to read it. I'm going to go to my freaking library website right the frick now well, and check it out. your mom probably also has it because I actually only have this book because your mom recommended it to my mom. Oh. That's one wow. of her favorite channels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> channel. <laughs> and then when I was up at the cabin, <laughs> yeah, through back channels. And then when I was up at the cabin this weekend, I found it half finished by my mom and started reading it. And she said I could take it with me as long as I brought it back. So I took it from the cabin. (laughs) Wait, so she hasn't finished it yet? I don't think so. So you can finish it. (laughs) Spoil it for her. (laughs) I didn't spoil anything for her. She's read the lottery. Everyone has. (laughs) Not everyone. I feel like I have. Um, well, I could get it from my mom. Maybe I'll ask her. But maybe I'll just check it out from my local lending library. Okay. <laughs> it's really, really interesting because it's uh, it's all written, you know, in first person from the perspective of Maricat. And she is, um, she's an interesting character. Even though you're inside her head the whole time, you don't... Is she I, an unreliable narrator? Um, I don't know yet. She could be, but like sh- she's um definitely. Oh, I bet this she's. This book kind of feels like every. This book kind of feels like every character is an unreliable narrator. Maybe in their they're own all way. a Frankenstein. Maybe they're all Frankenstein's. I'm having an issue where the one that's available. I don't like the cover. It's spooky. What does it look like? I accidentally saved. It. I'm gonna. I'm gonna share. Did it. you know that the book spooky. will be the same either way? <laughs> but then I have to like spend time with the spooky cover, Ben. It's yeah. kind of a spooky book. I mean, it's like suspenseful in a way. Wow, that, that like is spooky. A book I would enjoy. Thank you. It's it good. Spooky. I think Shirley Jackson's writing is very good. I think she plays a hold on it. Does a really good job of being like really unsettling and really spooky without saying anything that like without like relying on just like saying spooky words. <laughs> saying spooky words. <laughs> without saying spooky words. Without relying on saying spooky words. Yeah. None of her characters are ever like boo <laughs> or <"Ooh." laughs> That is a spooky word. I love that. Yeah. So recommend. Cool. Recommends. Well, great. We have yeah. always lived in the castle. And it's short, too. So, that's good. That's good. Did you say it's actually in a castle? Well, I just put a... P- it's not... Um, I mean, she calls it a house. It's definitely, like, a big house that they live in. Very cool. I have placed a hold on it in my local lending library. Great. Wait. Well, how about Its that? first screen adaptation appeared in 2018. Oh. Did you know that? No. Directed by Stacy Passon. Is it a movie? Yeah. Uh, oh. Starring Thaisa Far- Farmiga. Alexandra, D- Alexandra Daddario. Farter. Wait, Alexandra <laughs> Daddario. Is and- that her name? No, Thaisa Farmiga. You said Tra- Thaisa Farter. I did Thaisa not Farter. say that. You did. I Rec- did not. Show. 
Hold on. I, I'm seeing it as coming out in 2019. Oh, that's true. It came out in the LA Film Festival in 2018, but it's coming out uh, this week. What? What yeah. are the fucking chances? <laughs> what? It has Bad Alexandra channels. Daddario and Crispin Glover. Crispin Glover? Excuse me. That's, wow. a, that's a name I know, right? What's he been in? Yeah. He's been in creepy, spooky things. He's creepy, yeah, spooky. Yeah, he has a creepy yeah. face. Yeah, he's a spooky. He's a spooky guy. This one's spooky, dude. I mean, I, I, I will say this. I ha, I, I'm watching this trailer, and it looks as much as I know. It looks kind of, like pretty true to the books. How the book, however, um, there is a tendency in this world to overdo the creepiness with Shirley Jackson adaptations, mm. like. The Haunting of Hill House has had many movie adaptations and that new series on Netflix where, and several of them, there was only like one, maybe one and a half of the movies that were like trying to be true to the book and the rest of them were like way over the top, like, like really a lot of spooky words. So like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, she, she has, she has a lot of subtlety to her writing that doesn't necessarily come out in the same way on the screen, depending on whose hands it's in. But this looks kind of good. I think I saw something kind of t- speaking to that. Uh, okay, yeah. Her... Her son and literary executor is the co-executive producer of it. Mm. He was disappointed by earlier screen versions of his mother's work and decided to take a more active role in such. Mm. So oh. that could be why. Interesting. Yeah. Promising. Yeah. Oh, we're going to we're going to s- totally go see this. I got to finish this book first though. Yeah. It comes out this it comes out in 3 days. That's Guys, wow. it comes That's out the crazy. day that this d- is, no, it comes out on Friday. It could, yeah. wow. Okay, as you're listening to this, listener, this movie, a version of the book I'm talking about, just came out two days ago. So. This movie, a version of the book <laughs> we're talking about? Do you think that's why my mom recommended it to your mom, back channel? <laughs> <laughs> should, I don't think that so. That's what we nickname your mom now. <laughs> back channel. Back channel. <laughs> back channel brown. Yeah. Back channel brown. <laughs> That's quite good. Brown uh, channel. <laughs> oh, gross. Brown note. I don't. I think my mom was just asking for book recommendations. Actually. Oh well, back channel Brown's the one to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well, wow, wow. what a co- coincidence! I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Two of those. <laughs> Uh, what a coincidence yeah you better finish the book before you see the movie you'd hate to have it spoiled <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do um, I do think I, I probably would recommend that people do read the book first if you can because it is a very short book it's like a really quick read as I mentioned earlier so you probably could read it like and then go see it next weekend on its on its second Hannah, weekend. I told you I've just placed a hold on it in my local <laughs> lending library. <laughs> Your local lending library. <laughs> my local lending library. My local lending library. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Don't talk to me about beans right now. <laughs> I can't take it. I ate some old beans today. It did not go well for me. So I don't even want to talk about it. How? I need to understand. How it. old were the beans? <laughs> they were. Old. I don't know. They were from last week. That's some pretty old beans. <laughs> they were, were they old. In your fridge? Were you at work? No, they were in my home fridge. And yeah. I thought they were from a previous meal, and I thought I'll just finish these leftovers because I'm that kind of person. Yeah. And it a just giver. did not go well for me. They were old beans. They'd been sitting around getting gassy, and it wouldn't. It's not a good scene. <laughs> So don't talk to me about lentils. I will not be renting them or lending them <laughs> or eating them at all. No more old beans. No more old beans. <laughs> beans. That's Erin's slogan for her camp political That's campaign. That's my stance. That's my official stance. No <laughs> more old beans. Erin <laughs> Brown 2020. No New more old beans. beans. <laughs> no more old beans. <laughs> Uh, I guess that's it. That's all I got. I that's can't it. believe it. What a tie-in. I have a question about your book. 
Who's reading it to you? You said it's a paper copy, but so not an audiobook, but who's reading it to you? Um my I'm reading it to me. Wow. That sounds like so much words. <laughs> but inside my head, I'm not reading it out loud. Oh, okay. That's oh funny. my god. You just sent me a picture of um the outside of the door of the door where I'm like the room I'm in right now and Jack's just sitting there staring at the door. <laughs> wow. Just listening to my voice waiting for me to come out. That's wow. so nice. That's what Henry does. He's probably out there too. That's so sweet. If he's not, I'll take it as a betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> um well should we wrap it up so we can go um uh hug our pets? Rit 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 wrap it up. Wow, well said. (laughs) Homework. Aaron, what's your homework? My homework is if you are so inclined, if you've been listening to my segment and thinking, if that even makes sense, if (laughs) you've been listening to my segment thinking, wow, I'd like to listen to a lesbian romance book. I like romance, or maybe I don't know if I like romance, but I like lesbians. Well, (laughs) take take, take a Google for Radcliffe. She's got a lot of books on audiobook. You can, of course, if you'd rather read them, I guess, to yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. You can get them probably for PDF download and maybe buy hard copies. I don't know if they exist. Anywho, (laughs) check it out uh, on Audible. My Twitter's at Earn Burn, but I have to tell you guys, I got a notification from Twitter the other day that said that due to a quote-unquote bug, they accidentally gathered location data from my phone and then accidentally sold that data to some of their partners. And what? so I have been logged off of Twitter What ever the since. fuck? Yeah, uh, it was like, whoops, whoopsie-daisy. Accidentally tripped and gathered location data that you didn't consent to and sold it to people. Whoa. So, yeah. I feel like... I would. I, th- I feel like I hear of that happening to other people. Yeah, I'm I got I a notification about, that. about it. Wow, that's so, fucked up. Yeah, so I haven't been on Twitter, but um, that's at Earn Burn. You can look at my old tweets; they're still around. <laughs> and I have a website, EarnBurn.com. The end. Yeah, awesome. It's me well, now. Ben. My homework is play or watch Horizon Zero Dawn. It's a fun game to watch and play. It's very good. My Twitter is a uh, nicely proved Ben. It's a good Twitter. I tweet a lot. <laughs> Been tweeting lately a lot about how Game of Thrones has gone to shit. Oh God. Um. Uh. We didn't talk- oh, you know what? I just realized that was the upfront thing that I mentioned. I don't want to. I'm glad we didn't talk about it because yeah, here's the other thing. This is going to come out a week afterwards. It's going to come out on the date of the finale. And we're just going to, uh, we might as well just wait and talk about it next week. Yeah. When it's yeah. completely destroyed and decimated and pieces on the yeah, floor. Yeah, it sucks. It's su- the, sh- the, su- the show sucks shit now. Yeah. Well, that's sad. I'm it's, sad for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like, oh my God. It's just bad. It's but, like if uh, Santa w- was sending you weekly letters like, hey, your <laughs> present this year is going to be great. Oh, my God, you're going to love your Christmas present so much. Hannah, you cannot wait for this Christmas present. It's going to be amazing. And dropping all these And then he was like, oh, it actually, was. it's, it's got to be next Christmas. I can't give it to you this Christmas. Yeah. And you're going to have to yeah. wait another whole year for it, actually. Yeah, but it's going to be so great. We're going to make it better than you could imagine. And then he leaves a coffee cup in your fucking toilet, and he... <laughs> just brings you a sack of shit <laughs> and it's and like it's like a big green pea shit it's like the size yes. of a huge green yeah. pea yeah, size yeah and shit. he's like <laughs> and he's like but you didn't expect yeah, it right exactly as of a turd but it's like a green pea in shape and color. <laughs> right <laughs> and it's, it's in like. the coffee cup in the toilet which is kind of <laughs> quirky <laughs> <laughs> it's quirky, right? Yeah. So we'll talk about it next week. Uh, my Twitch is uh, disco twitch.tv slash disco Greg. Haven't streamed in a bit. Been, been busy. Uh, but I'll, you know, I'll do it again. Shut up. Stream uh, this. That's it. Stream Horizon Zero Dawn. I will if it's easy to do that. Stream your, m- m- your mom's Reason Zero Dawn. So... 
Yeah. Good. <laughs> um, thanks. Um, my homework is read We Have Always Lived in the Castle and then go watch the movie, I guess, because it looks like it might be good. And um, then go listen to this is a shout out to a podcast called Cast of Thrones, which has been uh, loving on, but also being very critical of Game of Thrones for many seasons now, and all of their skepticism has been proven right, and they're very um, enjoyable people, and their re- their recent episode that came out today, where they tried to do a synopsis of this le- this last episode, but c- c- continually broke down in just, like, yelling and screaming and complaining <laughs> throughout the entire thing, was extremely cathartic to listen to, and I would recommend it to anybody who is having uh, feelings about this. It's called Cast of Thrones, their most recent episode, as you are hearing this, if you listen on the day it comes out. Um, and I'm sure that the next one, if the season finale is as bad as it promises to be, will also be a great episode to listen to. So please listen to that. My Twitter is at Hanthropology. Uh, also, that's my Instagram. I have another podcast called So Dreamy, where we talk about dreams, uh, such as my prophetic all-mother dream in episode <laughs> one. Uh, okay. <laughs> but also other people's dreams, not just mine. Um, if you want to call us and tell us your obsession this week or rant about Game of Thrones or whatever you want. Um, We have a voicemail at 774-326-0420. Please. Um, We have a Twitter for the podcast at 2 Pod. Oh, another shout out to Ashley who's also been playing GeoGuessr, our friend um, our friend and listener uh, um, what's her friggin' handle? (laughs) Wow. Weather Miss um, on Twitter, she uh, she reached out to tell us that she uh, loves GeoGuessr too. So there oh, you go. awesome! Shout out. Yeah, and um, that was on Twitter. That's what reminded me. Uh, our Twitter is Too Broad Pod. Um, we're on Instagram at Way Too Broad. Uh, we have an email. You can email us if you have uh, things you want to write to us. Uh, at way too broad at gmail.com. I guess that is how email works. You can send attachments too. And <laughs> if you missed any of that, um, you can find all the information and links and everything for what we just said at way too broad.com uh, for anything you want and www.earnben.com for anything you need. And please leave us a review because we will love you so much if you do that. And we'll send you a sticker. We'll love you unconditionally, but especially on the condition that you leave us a review. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll just, look, yeah. It's like a tiered system, you know? Yeah, Everybody gets exactly. love. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks Not for listening, and we love you unconditionally, and the podcast candle is now extinguished. Well, that was like pretty much as tight as I could have expected it to be. Yeah, that was tight. Okay, all right, good. Stop recording.